let's take a look at interfaces and abstract classes. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about interfaces and abstract classes. Now, those once again might be very big words. However, once we're actually, you know, taking a look at those, we're going to be fine. So let's first of all, actually take a look at an abstract class. What I have been saying is that, well, the animal, really, what is an animal? You can have like particular animals, like a cat is an animal, a dog is an animal, but if you want to create a new animal, what is that? You always have something particular. So when we really think about it, the animal, we, we don't really want to create a new animal because an animal is a very, like why it, it doesn't make any sense. So this is a very abstract thing, meaning that we can make this an abstract class. Now, when we make this an abstract class, we write public abstract class animal in here. And what you will see is that literally nothing has changed. So everything is just working the same. The only thing that we now can't do is we can't do the following. We can't say something like animal, animal, let's say animal one uh, is equal to new animal. That is something we can't say because now what it's going to say is that, oh, when we hover over this animal is abstract and it cannot be instantiated. So we cannot make a new object, which is of type animal because an animal is abstract. It, 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 like there exists no object which is animal, right? There exists dog, which is an animal, but not animal. So that's I think that this actually is a very illustrative example in this case, and that is an abstract class. Now, what is really actually very very cool is that now what we can do is also well, we have this make sound method here, right? And we said that well, I mean, if we're really honest, every like thing that inherits from animal is going to make override this. What we can do is we can now make this an abstract method. And we're going to say what? Yeah, we're going to write like this public abstract void. So you have to still have the entire method signature in here. But then we just end it with a semicolon. And now this is a an abstract method, which each of the subclasses have to implement. Otherwise, they are not allowed to inherit from animal. That's actually really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new class called a bird. And what we're going to say is that this extends the animal class. And then when we hover over this, we can see that class bird must either be declared abstract or implement abstract methods make sound in animal. So we immediately get this and we can say implement methods and we can say yes, okay. And there you go. Now the method is implemented. The other error is once again, of course, because of the constructor matching super. And now the bird class is pretty much done. We can just put in here something like, for example, system out print line, and then this dot name uh, just tripped, for example, something like that. Right. And now the bird is also an animal, totally fine. So that's sort of the general idea when it comes to an abstract class. It's a class where we actually cannot create actual objects from. And also we can have these abstract methods, which are ins insanely useful because of course, why would the animal, which can't be created have to have like um, an actual implementation of this method doesn't really need to be the case. So that's actually really cool. And interfaces in and of themselves are actually very, very similar to an abstract class. So they're very related to each other. The idea is that with an interface, you basically only have abstract in quotes methods that you define in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two interfaces. So I'm going to say new Java class, and then we can actually even make an interface here. And we're going to call one of them I fly. So this is going to be the interface for things that can fly. And then we're going to make a new interface, which is going to be called I petable. Now, first of all, okay, what, what is this? Well, usually we start an interface with the letter I and then have something like something able. So it's just a sort of convention, what you want to name it. So this could also be I flyable. I fly is totally fine. We're not going to worry about it too much. So the I petable is going to have a void called pet. So this means that every class that implements this interface is ha going to have to override the pet method and actually have a particular implementation for this. Same with the I fly. Here we're going to have the fly method, which should make sense, right? Everything that can fly is going to implement this I fly. So let's, for example, say, well, I mean, of course we can pet a cat. So what we're going to say is we're going to implement the I petable interface. And then immediately we can hover over this and say implement methods, the pet method. And then, for example, we can say something like print line and then, uh, you know, 
package. Let's just say this name for the sake of argument here. Okay, fair enough. And this is now fine. And the crazy thing is that with interfaces, you might say, well, I mean, okay, but like, why wouldn't I just make another class or, or put this in the animal class or something like that? Okay, calm down. There's This also would work, of course, just trying to illustrate this here. So the pet method can now be called on the cat. And we could also um, cast the cat or, or make the cat an iPettable. So once again, we can make the use of polymorphism here and have a list of iPettables and pet all of them, for example. So that's really cool for an interface because the interface is sort of a an agreement that, hey, everything that is inside of here, when this interface is implemented, everything inside of here can be called on that class. So that's sort of a cool idea. And that's also why it's called an interface, right? So it interfaces with something else or it can interface with something else. And this is now really cool. What we can now also do is we can now also say, well, why wouldn't we make a new class and extend it as well? Ha ha ha. We can ever only extend from one class, but we can implement as many interfaces as we want. Meaning that, for example, in the bird, I can say, well, this is an iPettable and this is an iFly. Both work. No, no worries at all. But I, can, I cannot extend from multiple classes. So as you can see now, it actually wants me to implement both methods and I'm going to say yes. So we can then, so for example, say system out print line and we can say gently, gently touched or gently padded. Let's say that's, that's better. Touched sounds a little weird. Gently padded the sunny, right? Because of course a bird, you can't be careful with that. And then the fly is just this dot name. Let's say flapped, flapped its wings. Also totally understandable. Fine. Now we can, of course, let's just for completion's sake, implement the I petable as well here, just so that we have this, right? And then implement this method. And then we're going to say yes. And then this is going to be system out print line. And then we're just going to say this dot name had his belly scratched, for example, right? So this is now interfaces implemented. And what's really important here is that you can have multiple interfaces implemented and you can then also go via this. So what we can now do is once again, I can make, for example, a list of I petable now, I petable, right? Just like, let's say pets is a new array list, for example. And then I can just say pets dot, and then we're going to add, for example, Benji, and then we're going to add the Gracie. And then we're even going to add, and now really interesting stuff, animal. Ah. What is this? Well, I can add this one because if we hover over this, you can see, well, we have put in an animal, provided an animal, but we require an I petable. In our case, an animal is not petable because of course, not every animal is petable, right? It's like, okay, a dog, of course you can pet and a cat you can pet. I probably wouldn't put crocodile in there and stuff like that. So it actually does make sense that the interface is done with the individual dogs. You could, of course, also, this is something that you might be able to do, make a class which is petable animal, which implements this, and then you can further, let's say, inherit downstream. However, in this case, this doesn't work. So that's actually very interesting, right? So you can't put, we can't put animal in there, but we can, for example, make a new bird and we can put that in there. Let's just say this is, for example, um, let's say Yoshi.png, and then this is Yoshi, and then he's, I don't know, let's say 12 years old. So we've just put that in there as well. And now let's just go through this. So let's just make a for each loop. So for, and then we're going to say I petable, pet, 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 let's say pet, in pets, right? We're going to say pet dot pet. Interesting. Okay. That's, okay what's can that going to do? Actually, let's, um, you know, change so that we have a dog, a cat, and then a bird. And what's going to happen at the very end here is we're going to have, first of all, had his belly scratched and then whiskers was petted and then we have gently petted Yoshi. So once again here, polymorphism coming into play with the interfaces as well. So that's really, really cool. And once again here, it's the same thing. If this is not like entirely understandable, absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Interfaces, same with abstract classes and then going back the uh, inheritance and the uh, polymorphism. It's all a bunch of stuff that is more complicated and that's just going to take time to really learn. Like it's going to be something that's going to be, take a little more effort than just watching a 10 minute video, let's say.
However, it's probably a good start. That's the main thing. And what is also very interesting is that you can actually cast anything into anything. So that means that, or rather, if I have a an interface, I can cast it to anything. So I can say an I fly. So I'm going to make a new I fly called flying, let's say. And that's going to be equals to whiskers, let's say, right? Whiskers, whiskers. And then you can say, well, that doesn't work. Yeah, but I can cast it. So I can say I fly. And you can see I have cast whiskers into an I fly. Now, of course, that's not going to work, right? Because if I then say flying dot fly, we're actually going to get a class cast exception right here. So this is another exception that we need to be aware of. So we can actually cast anything into an interface, but if it doesn't implement that interface, it's not going to work. So that's something to be aware of as well. So overall, that is the general like overview idea of interfaces and abstract classes. Once again, uh, when you actually tr start to implement stuff, then you will probably be aware of, okay, how to use it, where to use it and stuff like that. So don't worry too much about it. Otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.